Now that's a sound I'll never forget. Guitar Hero, a game that started the rhythm game boom in the late 2000s and spawned many sequels. Released in 2005 on the PlayStation 2, Guitar Hero would be critically acclaimed and sold over 1 million units thanks to its guitar controller. Despite this game's popularity, there hasn't been an in-depth look into it. To be fair, Guitar Hero is a fairly simple game, but it has a lot to analyze. So without further ado, let's take an in-depth look into this rather underlooked, not to be confused with underrated, classic PS2 game. The presentation of this game is very appealing to new players, considering this game to be the first in the series. Once the players enter their band name, they're greeted to a simple diagram that shows how to play Guitar Hero in three simple steps. Moving on to the main menu, the player gets five options. Career, Quick Play, Multiplayer, Tutorials, and Settings. If the player has at least an IQ of 20, they know what each of these options will do, leaving no room for confusion. The player is most likely to go to tutorials first to understand more of the game. Luckily, there are three steps that are simple and only a few minutes long. The player really only needs to play the first step to understand the game enough to get through a few songs. Once the simple game mechanics are known, it's on to quick play. The player has 10 famous rock songs they can choose from various artists. Once the player has picked their song with difficulty, the game can be played. The song list has a nice variety of rock music that varies from classic rock to more recent rock. Well, recent according to 2005. The song playing part shows the main gameplay. Not only will they use what they learn in the tutorial, they'll also see new things that give energy and fun to the gameplay. It's quick and simple, and the player knows how to play already. Alright, let's get the boring basics out of the way. Guitar Hero is easy to play, but hard to master. To play, hold down a button that appears on the fretboard, and strum it when it touches one of the five colors near the end of the fretboard. Hold down multiple buttons for chords, chords will give you more points, hit many notes in a row to get a multiplier to get your score up, and hit certain patterns in the song for star power. Multipliers multiply the value of notes, from a 2 times multiplier to a 4 times multiplier. If one would like, they could also use the whammy on long notes to get more star power and change the sound of the note. Use star power whenever you're about to fail or want to increase your score. A player has a rock meter in the bottom right of the screen, which tells the quality of the player's performance. Red is not a place one wants to be. The red indicates the player will fail if they do not improve their performance. The fretboard will flash red if the player is on the edge of failing. A missed note or two could stop the song. Yellow means the player is doing fine. Just fine. They're not failing, but they're not amazing. Green means the player is doing great, and the audience is going crazy. Being in the green is ideal, being as far from failure as possible. Star power can get one out of failure and into the green. It doubles the value of notes and makes it easier to recover from a tricky segment of the song. Hoppos are an advanced technique. Hoppos are notes that don't need to be strummed, rather tapped. To pull a hoppo off, one is to strum the note before the hoppo, hold the note, and then press the hoppo. No strum needed. The system is rather flawed, but that'll be discussed later. One thing that separates Guitar Hero from other rhythm games is one can choose their difficulty. The player can choose between easy, medium, hard, and expert. Easy only uses the first three notes, medium uses four notes from green to blue, hard uses all five notes. Expert also uses all five notes, but it's more tricky and has more notes to hit. Each increasing difficulty is, naturally, more challenging than the previous difficulty. As one moves up their difficulty, they can expect more notes and harder sections to pull off, whether they have to use chords instead of single notes or spread out their fingers to hit further buttons. The difficulty pace is great for new players that want to start a small and build their way out to be a guitar legend. The difficulty also gets harder as the player progresses through the six venues in the career mode. The game slowly gets harder and harder. The learning curve is nicely adjusted. By the time the player has finished the last venue, they'll be able to adopt to the next difficulty 
and notice a smooth transition. So what rewards can players expect for performing well on a song? This is where the store comes in. The store is a place where players can spend their hard-earned cash on guitars, skins for their guitars, bonus songs, secret characters, and behind-the-scenes videos of Guitar Hero's production. How does one get cash? Players must pass a song to get money. The amount of money given to the player is dependent on their performance on the song they selected. A player can get 3, 4, or 5 stars on a song. 3 stars give the least amount of money, and 5 stars get the most amount of money. How do players increase their performances on songs? Stars are based on the final score one gets when they finish a song. Players can play the same song to understand the song's pattern better, use star power, or get 5 stars on an easier song to improve their scores. Players are not rewarded with money if they play on easy. This reward system makes sense. If the player wants more, they will have to do more. It's kind of like capitalism. The learning curve and reward system work hand in hand in this game, letting players easily improve their skills while promising them a reward for doing so. The player can't get the full benefit of buying everything in the store if they decide to stay on easy. In all difficulties, excluding easy, a player has to have 5 stars on both songs, but can have a few 4 stars and 3 stars on a few songs if they want to buy everything in the store. Other than monetary rewards, players can get the Battle Axe Guitar and Guitar God status as incentives for going on higher difficulties. Once the player has completed all 30 songs on the main playlist on Expert, they receive the Battle Axe Guitar, which they can make their character hold during gameplay. Except for the Grim Reaper, he can't wield the special guitar. To obtain the Guitar God status, the player has to get 5 stars on Medium, Hard, and Expert on all songs, including bonus songs. This isn't really an incentive, as all it does is update the player's rocker status. That's it. Nothing really special. That's the career mode. Quick Play allows the player to jump to a song without having to select a character, a venue, or a guitar. Quick Play songs don't give any money, but you can enter your high scores on a bathroom wall. Quick Play is self-explanatory. Quickly play the game, just pick a song of difficulty, and play. Not much to say, honestly. Multiplayer allows two players to battle against each other to see who can hit the most notes and get the highest scores. The main audio switches to whichever player has the higher score, meaning whenever the player with the main audio hits or misses a note, the audio will respond accordingly. Players choose their characters, guitars, song, and then their difficulty. So player mode is kind of strange, at least the song part. Players trade turns playing sections of the song, and still has the ability to use their star power. There are some sections where both players are playing, but the players will not play the song the whole way through with notes. Players should be able to play the song without trading sections. It feels weird when your friend is playing and you just have to sit there waiting. It would feel more natural and flow smoother if both players could play at the same time through the whole song. Doesn't that make more sense? It's okay to have a mode like this for beginners, but for experts, it's frustrating. The second player may get a section that has more notes than the section the first player gets, making the mode unfair by giving the second player an upper hand. For what it's worth though, it is still fun to play this game with a friend. Seeing who's better at the game sounds like a nice night with the boys. I've done that before, but everybody knew I was the best, so no competition. Next up is the tutorials. The tutorials are comprised of three steps that cover everything in the game. Not only are they short, but they're very helpful in telling the player how to play the game and how to be a better player. The tutorials go from the basics to advanced techniques pro players should know. Finally, the options. Options include sound settings to adjust the sound levels of the music, game sound effects, and toggle stereo sound. Data settings to delete a save file, rename a band, save a file, load a file, and toggle autosave. Bonus videos, which are purchased from the store and the credits. Not really gameplay, just things to adjust the game settings and things to watch. This game was created in 2005 and looks as such. It was created in the middle of the PS2's lifespan before next-gen consoles were released. To be fair, this game looks good for the time it came out and the budget the game had of $1 million. It is a lot of money, yes, but a lot of money had to go to plenty of other resources to make this game. 
Anyways, the visuals of the menus use posters that have semi-surreal art. Well, some of them. The menus are supposed to give a feeling that the player is outside a huge concert venue, and the posters are supposed to be signs from the musicians playing in the venue or advertisements that sponsor the venue. They fit quite well with the text. It makes it look like the text is part of the posters and not just text that's over the posters. Mixed with the menu music, this theme is a brilliant idea and complements not only the idea of the game, but the gameplay itself. The menus are before the concert starts, and the gameplay is the concert itself. The menus also flow smoothly. With each menu, the player gets progressively closer to the concert from the start of the concert hall. Alright, enough of me saying menus, and also the characters. Guitar Hero has 8 playable characters that have their own personalities and music genres that represent them. Axel Steel is a beefy, casually dressed guy that represents everything metal. Clive Winston is the hippie dude that likes classic rock or any rock from the 60s and 70s. Judy Nails is an edgy youngster that's really into that emo and grunge stuff. Johnny Napalm is basically punk rock personified in his actions and in the way he plays guitar. Pandora is rather a mysterious individual who lives a pretty goth lifestyle. Not a surprise once you've seen her. Xavier Stone, a groovy guy that wishes blues rock and funk metal were more appreciated. There are two unlockable characters that can be bought in the store. Izzy Sparks. He's definitely different from the rest. This guy's a real mess of stuff. Both in personality and appearance. Oh, and he likes glam rock and hard rock. The Grim Reaper, or Grim Ripper, rather. Who knew the Grim Reaper could shred a guitar? For all we knew, this guy just took souls. No surprise, he's really into death metal. These characters really show their personality during gameplay. Their styles come alive whenever they're up on the stage doing what they do best. They're so full of energy and identity, they make the player feel like they're a rock star and gets them so excited to be playing a fake guitar. Each character has their own unique movements and unique fretboards that play into their personality. Whenever the player activates star power, the character will do a crazy feat with their guitar while still being able to produce sound with their guitar. Also, whatever notes the player hits, the character also hits, another way of immersing the player into the game. Speaking of guitars, the guitars the character use are based on real guitars that many rock legends have used themselves. The in-game models look pretty close to their real-life counterparts. The only guitar not based on a real guitar is the Battle Axe. It's gifted to the player from the guitar gods themselves. It's not too special, but it's still a nice design and an enjoyable reward. The characters aren't the only thing that make the gameplay lively and energetic, the venue plays a part as well. The venue's energy depends on the player's performance. If the rock meter is on green, everything lights up, the audience goes crazy, and sometimes a part of the stage moves. If the rock meter is on yellow, the venue is in neutral, the audience is kinda just listening to the music, nothing lights up, and not much happens. If the rock meter is on red, the stage gets darker and the audience is booing in dismay they have to listen to such a terrible performance. The player wants to stay on green, that way they get the most energy out of their time playing a song. Not only does the stage react, but so do the characters' facial expressions, based on whether they're on red, yellow, or green. In the red, the characters get concerned and scared about their failure. On yellow, the character is just playing their guitar. Truly the neutral mode of the gameplay. And on green, the character is rocking out. Their true personality shines. Additionally, if the player activates star power, the audience will clap to the beat of the song. The energy from the venue mixed with the music itself immerses the player into the game. They start to jam out and want to keep doing better. Speaking of venues, let's talk about each one of them. Mother's Basement. Hey, every rockstar has to begin somewhere. This venue takes place in a small basement that only has a few speakers and rugs to absorb the sound. Don't want the neighbors to get upset. Well, either way, the player gets paid. The Freak Pit. Rockstar's first real gig. This bar is not a huge upgrade from the basement, but this will get the word out about the player's band. It has more people thanks to the space of the bar, along with flyers on the wall about local artists. The Red Octane Club. Now this is a real stage for a band to play on. Not the most luxurious place to play, but now's the time to be a real rock star. The Republic Theater. A theater that was redesigned for a rock show. The curtains behind will open if the rock meter is green. Even with the big space in the theater, 
the show will be sold out in minutes. Toxic Summerfest, an outside event during the sunset that's so loud, people from 100 miles will still hear it. Radical skater deeds, an exploding nuclear reactor, and a destroyed environment add to the stage's personality. The Garden, an enormous stadium with thousands of people watching the legendary show happening on stage. The stage shows a battle between good and bad, with thunder cracking parts of the foreground. The venues show a nice progression from being a small vocal artist to a rock legend that puts on shows that are impossible not to hear of. The stages get bigger, and so does the audience. So, in conclusion, each part's officials work together to give the player a lively, energetic experience that really immerses the player into the game. It makes the player really get into the song and its rhythm. It gives them a reason to make a great performance so they can feel the energy, amaze the audience, and feel like a guitar hero. Now, let's get into the music of this game. Here, let's just jump right into a song. Fat Lip by Sum41. Being the skate punk kid I am, this is a perfect song to play. As made famous by Sum41. Well, that's one way to give credit to the artist. Hmm, this sounds a bit different from the actual song. Maybe it's a different version of the song I never heard of. Heck, it could be a recording made specifically for Guitar Hero. Okay, that's a bit of a pipe dream. Hey, wait a minute. This isn't Derek Weebly or Dave Baksh. Who are these posers? Okay, if you couldn't tell, these aren't actually the master recordings of these songs. They're covers from the musical group known as Wave Group. Wave Group is a bunch of in-house musicians that are pretty good at the instruments they play. Okay, but why would Guitar Hero use covers instead of the original recordings? Harmonix was a small company at the time, and only had a budget of $1 million to make a PS2 game. The average cost to buy a license for a song's master recording is around $25,000. The average cost to buy the license to cover a song is around $10,000. Harmonix had no idea if Guitar Hero would blow up and be a huge success or fail completely. So to save money in the case of the unfortunate, they chose to use covers instead. The other reason why covers are used is due to the fact the player isn't the original people who recorded the master recording, so they can't sound exactly like the original artist. With the exception of the bonus songs, every song is covered by the people at Wave Group. So, how do they hold up compared to the master recordings? Quite well, actually. Well, most of them. The covers are either pretty close to the original, or better than the original, or just aren't as good as the original. The covers sometimes add additional parts to the song, usually extending to outros. There's a solo in Ziggy Stardust not found in the original song that fits so well into the song, and makes one wonder why Bowie himself didn't think of it. The sound quality of these songs are also improved, considering some of the songs are made when records were the primary way to listen to music at home. Speaking of that, the variety of music is very broad and large. The songs span over many decades and many genres as well. The oldest song, Spanish Castle Magic, is from 1967, and the most recent songs are from 2005 that take up a majority of the bonus songs. The genres are plentiful, too many for me to list verbally. The song selection is beautifully put together. Guitar Hero has songs for popular artists, but also has songs that are for more unappreciated artists. This game will definitely expand the player's spectrum of rock music. It's doubtful the player has already listened to all these songs in the game before. Okay, that's the main song list. The bonus songs include local artists in the Boston area, artists who had a hand in creating Guitar Hero, whether it be song production or gameplay production, and Zach Wilde. It's strange that Zach Wilde, legendary guitarist known for his band Black Label Society, along with working with Ozzy Osbourne on his solo albums, is on a set list that consists of rather underground artists. To be fair, Harmonix didn't ask Wilde to be in the game. Wilde asked Harmonix to be in the game after he learned about its existence and enjoyed the idea of it, which was during the end of the development of Guitar Hero. And his song was pretty fun to play anyway. Besides Wilde, the second notable song is Cheat on the Church by Graveyard Barbecue. Harmonix ran a contest called Be a Guitar Hero, and whoever won got their song included in the game. Graveyard Barbecue was the victor, prompting them to meet with their Harmonix team and coded their song into Guitar Hero. The song is very different among the bonus songs in the game and even the main setlist, 
It's definitely a unique song, so I'd say it deserves a spot in the game. A cool thing about these bonus songs is the loading screen before playing them gives context to which harmonics employees made it, or a brief description of the band. Some of the people that perform for the covers have one of their songs in the set list. Overall, the bonus songs are a really nice addition to this game. All the popular artists got their spot in the main set list, and then the underground artists get their spot in the bonus songs. Additionally, most of the covers are just as good as the original songs, but the bonus playlist is a great way to expose players to lesser known artists, and the types of music are spread across many decades and genres, which is also a great way to expand the spectrum of the player's knowledge of rock music. Also, praise Tyson Yen and Marcus Henderson. I love these guys. There's three bonus videos the player can purchase in the store. Each of the videos follows the making of the characters, venues, and songs. The making of characters and venues show a screen capture of in-game models that is complemented with commentary by designers of the topic discussed in the video. They're informative and filled with commentary that touches on the smaller details of the game. The Making of Songs video is a live-action recording of random bits of the people at Wave Group making music. It shows every part of musical production, more than just the guitar. There's two hidden songs that can't be accessed by normal play. One has to use a cheat device to access them. The songs are Triple Let by Andrew Bush and Graveyard Shift by an unknown artist, though Harmonix reported one of their employees named Aaron made it. It's not 100% confirmed though. Both songs were put in the game without permission by Harmonix. They look pretty fun to play. I don't have a PS2 cheat device, so this isn't my footage on the screen. There's also a few cheats the player can activate by tapping a combination of buttons on the main menu. They're pretty silly, but they add a bit of stupid fun to the game. Look at Judy Nail shredding on the Guitar Hero controller. Or Pandora playing on thin air. Now that's talent. There's also an unlock all cheat for those that can't be bothered to complete the campaign, or they just want to play Bark at the Moon without wasting a few hours. Guitar Hero is a great game, but it isn't perfect. When I talked about the gameplay section of this game, I mentioned how the game is very welcoming to new players. What about players that have already played another Guitar Hero without playing the first Guitar Hero, like me? It could be a bumpy transition. Case in point, the Hoppo system and fretboard. The Hoppo system in this game is different from the rest of the games. To recap, Hoppos are notes that don't have to be strummed, they can just be tapped. In order to pull it off, no pun intended, the player must hold a note that comes before the Hoppo and simply tap the Hoppo. Simple enough, but difficult for a returning player to get used to. In other games, the player doesn't have to hold the note before the hoppo, they can just tap the button without having to worry about the previous note. This isn't made apparent either. Hoppos are taught in the third tutorial, but a returning player already knows how to play Guitar Hero, so they won't feel the need to play the tutorials. Most likely, the returning player will hop into career mode, play a song, and be confused as to why the hoppo buttons don't work like they should. Speaking of hoppos, solos are made hard to hit in this game because of them and the fretboard's hitbox and speed. Solos are hard to hit because one's fingers are restricted to holding the previous note before hitting the next note. It disrupts the flow of hitting fast approaching notes by confining fingers rather than letting them fly across the fretboard. Also, the speed of the fretboard feels slow to some players. It'd be nice to adjust its speed somehow. Even though the fretboard of an expert is the fastest it goes, it still feels slow sometimes. This is a problem, because during solos, notes build up and become cluttered in one place. It's hard to understand its pattern, and when the player recognizes all the notes, the notes have already hit the fretboard, and the player frankly strums and hits notes hoping they hit something. If the notes came a bit faster, the player can recognize the notes and hit them without being mesmerized by the confusing clutter of the notes. There's no practice mode, meaning the player can't go back to a specific section and improve their performance. In short, when the hoppos are not reliable and are hard to comprehend, it reduces its usability and makes players strum everything. Issue number 2. Little reason to increase the difficulty. If the player wants to unlock everything in the store, all they have to do is 5 star most of the songs on the main playlist on medium. Why would they need to move on to hard if they won't get anything new? Why would they go to expert if all they get is a new guitar? This isn't a huge issue, if the player wants to keep playing on medium, more power to them. But what's the point of having the hard and expert difficulties if the player can get almost everything on medium? 
Art and Expert will provide a challenge, but they don't provide a reward that's worth playing the 30 songs again. Issue number 3, no post-game content. This is mostly for players that completed one difficulty and unlocked everything they wanted. After the main song list, the player could play the bonus songs, but they don't give any money or any rewards for completing it. There's not much to do. The player could try to buy a star every song, but once they bought everything, the money for a better performance won't buy anything, because there's nothing left to buy. There's also the bonus videos, so that's another thing, although there's nothing stopping the player from playing the bonus songs or bonus videos while they're still on the main set list. Overall, Guitar Hero is a fun rhythm game that has so much energy and detail and immerses the player into the game. The visuals, characters, and venues give personality and show how much this game has to offer. The music is varied from many decades and genres of rock music that's bound to reveal new songs and artists that expand the player's spectrum of music. It has issues that don't ruin the game but are noticeable and annoying. So in total, that's 47 total songs plus the two hidden songs. 4 difficulties to help the player become a real guitar hero, 6 uniquely designed venues, 8 characters that have their own personality, a quick play mode for players that just want to jump into a song, 6 cheat codes that are fun to fool around with, 13 guitars to shred on, 3 tutorials that are short but filled with all the knowledge one needs to play the game, a multiplayer mode that is flawed but still fun to play. If the player completes the campaign on only one difficulty, it's around 3 hours, 3.5 three hours with bonus songs. If the player completes the campaign from easy to expert, it's around 12 hours, 14 hours with bonus songs. This game has a lot of content and a good amount of playtime, but only if the player chooses to grow their skills. Guitar Hero has big potential to be an amazing game, but it just needs a bit more content to make it worthwhile. Last but not least, with all that being said, Rock on!